as an EP to you all. Good evening, welcome to Saveto and Pastor Anu Facebook Live. Such a pleasant surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful surprise. You know, we come live uh, every Thursday, and uh, because today is such a monumental day, right. and it's a monumental day, not because of the day itself, but because of the uh, wonderful personality that we have in this day, and uh, life that is live with us on our show today. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking of no other person, uh, but the most charismatic man <laughs> we've ever met, uh, the most intelligent of his generation, uh, he's trying to, why we use his generation is because he's trying to raise some of us to be smarter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is his pride. That's so uh, we have with us uh, an intellectual, uh, a philosopher, uh, a thinker, a thinker, an author of so many books. This is a man who is going to write over 5,000 books. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> and he's also a transformation strategist. Yeah. <laughs> transformation strategist. That's right. Why some people will want to argue that transformation strategist is what he would want to be. But what he has done is called national transformation. Okay. He's done it as a template and is, you know, is spreading uh, that same template to other countries around the world. Okay. And just recently, he announced that he will be in the country called Nigeria. Nigeria, Nigeria our country. country. It will start to make its impact felt and then spread to the rest of Africa. Africa. And I'm sure you cannot wait. Uh, you know who we are talking about, uh, but we will give him uh, time to talk to you. <laughs> so make welcome on our show today, yeah. Pastor Dr. Sunday Adela. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. It's, it's such a honor to have you around, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, when when we came to, to your place, we were, before coming, because we have the show every Thursday, and so we were like, we're going to be here on Thursday, and uh, we would definitely give it a shot to have you <laughs> <laughs> to have you on our Facebook live show. And thank you so much, sir, for for being being true at heart. Thank you for standing for a cause and not. Um, not flinching back based on uh, people's perception of you and what they have to say. Thank you so much, sir, for being the frontliner and for um, for setting a model, um, one whose rhetoric um, aligns with his, with his practice. And we thank you so much, sir. And uh, it's such a honor. Guys, well, I think as you join us, because we have just an hour, so we want to maximize it. You see, you, you really have opportunities like this. These are privileged opportunities. And what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be throwing questions. <laughs> well, a wise, man, a wise man once said that when you have opportunities to sit down with, with, um, with erudites and with wise people, you don't talk too much. Any opportunity you have is to give them questions. Questions. And so guys, instead of saying welcome to Pastor Anu, all of that, we're not going to do that today. Because we want to go straight to tap into the plethora of wisdom that we know that Dr. Sunday um, possesses. Yes. So, so uh, we'll be taking your questions, some of those who you may, uh, some of those which you may have currently, uh, or as the show goes on. Don't be scared to drop it in the chat box. Pastor Sunday is always open to answer questions, albeit. Questions with purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not just any kind of question. Just questions with purpose. Something that will uh, hit a particular chord and will be achieving a particular uh, purpose. So be very free to ask your questions. We'll be taking them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and before we, before we continue, I think it's good if we um, tell all of our viewers watching right now to quickly share this link, share this video. As a matter of fact, you can invite everybody possible. I always say you can invite your friends, invite your families. You can also invite your enemies because what they're going to learn will be something that your issues with them will be a determining factor. They are going to be so transformed and they're going to be blessed. So why not, within the next one second, two seconds, five seconds, hit the share button and let's get started so we can actually get everything possible within this one hour time. So we, we, we trust you're doing it right now. We trust you're doing it because uh, we want to go straight. So do you yes. want to give a yes. yes, let's let's go straight. Uh, Pastor Sunday, you were born on the 28th of May, uh, 1967. Yeah. 
And uh, that means on the 20th of May this year, he'll be 50. God name so, Jubilee. <laughs> so you may want to shout out and yeah. tell Pastor Sunday a happy, happy birthday, birthday in advance. Happy birthday. Wow. So for a man born in Idomila, uh, southwestern Nigeria, you won scholarship and uh, you came to the then Soviet Union. And uh, there were a lot of, about your stories, you know, from the book Olonwa and uh, We've learned so much even from being beside you and also from hearing testimonies. Uh, of late, there has been a, uh, a cascade of testimonies coming in every, every day mm -hmm. uh, about the man who Pastor Sunday is. Now, you've said a lot about your youth. We, we know where to find the stories. We are going to put the links there. So we do not want you to re repeat the rhetorics that uh, we know that are out there. Uh, but there's just one question I want to ask. Uh, as youth, we are going through some a particular phase in our life, which uh, I know you would agree is probably the most important in a man's life. So, what was it for you that was the most important lesson of your youth? Youth, you are talking now between what age to what age? Between your transition from Idomila to you okay. becoming a full man. Okay, but youth is it? Uh, ranged or gauged in age bracket because for example in this country where we're living now uh, most people will say you are a youth probably mm, between the age of that maybe young adult let's say 17 18 to 35 mm. but in some other countries like maybe in america i think it's between that same age to 25 or in some other culture is to 30. So okay, so I think the main one between that is 30 now. <laughs> 25, 35, 30. Yeah. So probably we should go for between 17 and 30. And so 30. my most important youth, I mean my most important lesson. Yes. Yeah. Okay, my most important lesson at the age of when I was a young man, between the age of 17 and um, 30, is the fact that I discovered one of the greatest revelations in my Mm. which is the fact that it is not destiny that determines the fate of an individual. I discovered that fatality, fatality and fatality or predestination has been much misunderstood. Mm. And from the culture that I'm coming from, I was growing up thinking that the people who are well off and who are wealthy that God has blessed them mm. to be wealthy. And that people like, someone like me, that who are unfortunate, who are not so blessed by God. That was the idea I had. So that kind of made me to think that there were some people destined, that destined for greatness. Mm. And then there were some people that were not, that would not, that would have to struggle, mm. that are not so destined for greatness. Mm -hmm. So, but at 19, I discovered that it's the opposite, that geniuses are no more. Mm. That geniuses are created by their hard work. Mm. So geniuses are not born, but geniuses are created through hard work. That anybody who will work hard and be diligent enough mm. to put in all the effort can become anybody he wants to be or anything he wants to be. That, even though I was in one of the smallest villages in Nigeria with only 40 houses, that was enough for me to say, eh? And I read Bible help me to get it. And it's in Deuteronomy 28, verse 13. That, you know, starting from verse 1, it says, if you diligently obey, observe all these words that the Lord your God is putting before you today, and that you'll be the head. So anybody can be the head. Anybody can be first. So it doesn't really matter if you are not a Jew. I can speak it. So, ah, then I say, hey, then I'm not saying this village. Mm -hmm. I am going to. So, if I didn't know it depends on just my effort. Mm -hmm. If it only depends on my effort, then let's put in the effort. That is what, that is the most singular, um, the most important singular lesson that transformed my own life. Because on the basis of that, I said I would never be second anymore mm -hmm. to anybody. And right now, I say it even in a better way. That anything that I do, I want to do it so well that there will be nobody that in my generation that will be as good as me. And 
and I will do anything that I want to do so well that even out of the people who have lived it before me, no mm -hmm. one would have done it so, so mm -hmm. well. And I will do anything so well that even for 500 years or years after I'm done, mm -hmm. that we will still not be able to find someone who will do it so well. So uh, that particular you know, understanding that I can become anything I want to become mm -hmm. and that it's not in the hand of God or Satan. Oh. That he has already blessed me with everything that I need to become all I could become. Mm. And any individual too, anybody mm. could become in the world. Satan will not disturb you and God will not stand in the way. Mm. He has already blessed you. It's not that he has given you this destiny and that destiny. You cannot do anything. Do anything you want to do. No, no, but if you do it, you put in the effort, you know, God has already paved the way for you. Mm. That is the most important revelation for that. Wow. 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 Amazing. Well, uh, listening to listening to you, so it's this is this is not as mind brain as it would be if I'm totally ignorant and if I'm just listening to you for the first time. However, what 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 I want to say in, in regards to that is what what we are used to hearing, what sentences like um um our destiny is in God's hands, and um, somehow makes us to you know we're talking about some songs that that we sing when we when we um in our young, very young days, so, songs like um the uh, Gorilla Mola and your destiny is what determines your tomorrow. We are mad all la 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 Gorilla Mo and things like that. And so it made us think that okay, <laughs> <laughs> it, it made us translate it to people. Like okay, people so let me, let me sing the song so that I'll be able to know. So the song is in Yoruba. It says Gorilla Mola la Gorilla Mola. So that song says Ori Ori lo mo that means it's my destiny that determines or that would determine who I will be tomorrow. So whether I will be wealthy or not tomorrow, it is my destiny that would determine that. <laughs> so that is the kind of song we sing out, not like this like my faith. Right? Yeah, yeah, my faith. So we we we, we, we just we we, we we resort to faith, and so listening to this, it means you can be anything you want to be. So it's not about um, destiny, it's not about um, what your head is carrying, and you know, being raised in a very religious background, um, there is this idea that of, of people taking your destinies and exchanging destinies, and um, so and so you're your reward, so your star, and the person. I, don't know, I think maybe no. you can address it. No, something I, like I don't, I'm not familiar with it. I was sorry. Like, like someone sees your destiny while you're young. Sees it? Eh? Yeah, they see, 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 see. see yeah, see your destiny. And um, I've heard of those. Uh, those what do you mean they see your destiny? Uh, more like uh, they see your future, your future, and then they can interfere. Interfere with, with it. What do you have to say about no, it? Like, you know, that I think this is the principal thing why a lot of us get spiritual. In okay. Africa, life. Mm -hmm. So from from young or from a very young age, you believe that somebody can interfere with, with your destiny, with your future, with what you can become. Mm -hmm. you so we were trained to be secretive on that basis. Yeah, you have a goal, you so you must not share your goal, goal until you achieve it. Not because you are planning, but because you the moment scared. somebody knows about it, you are scared that they are going no, to it's not interfere. Possible. I, I don't believe that. <laughs> People still believe that today. today? Yeah. Yes, and there are many who believe that? Yes, sir. That people can interfere. Somebody can... As a matter of fact, many people are humble. Not because they are humble, but because they don't know who to talk to now and offend. Of, what do you mean offend? Okay. For example, if, you know, by matter of principle, if you are to reprimand somebody, okay. and you... Because you are thinking this person now, you don't know if you offend him, and you're going to stand in, bet in, in between you and your destiny. So that yeah. singular act, that, uh, that singular thinking, that people, someone can stand in between you, spiritually, yeah. and where you will get, where you are meant to get to in life. So like, what do you have to say? Interfere with you. Yeah. If you, if you, if someone can spiritually um, alter. Yeah. Then I think that's the word. No, no, no. What you are saying, it's making me very sad. Making me very, very sad. And the way people are talking about it, I see not just you people talk about it. I see people, it's in general. You even talk to, you are talking to me right now, 
as if I should have known about it, that everybody should know about it. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> one of the things. So which means it's prayer. It's popular. So it's, it's a prayer point. It's a prayer point. So this is everywhere. Uh -uh. Touch my destiny and it's time. making it's me very point. it's making me very, very sad and grieved. Sad, 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 sad. Agreed and offended. What you are talking about is in, is 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 insulting Calvary. It's insulting the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. What you are talking about is making nomenclature of redemption. You are you people are actually stepping on. You are insulting God and slapping him. But you know, by even saying this and conceiving this and even contemplating this. Now, if it had gone to the extent that even the churches will pray about this, then I'm done. I'm totally done. I feel right now like we should just close down those churches. I feel we should just catalyze everybody who are doing their thing. They are not doing church. That is not church. Because you cannot make God. Who gives destiny to somebody to make him to be so weak? Don't do that to my God. I don't know the kind of God that you both believe in that come true. I don't know the kind of God that you know. But the God that created that destiny, don't make him so weak. Don't reduce him so much as to thinking that he doesn't have the power to guide what he has created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or to protect the destiny that he has set. Mm -hmm. He is God, by the way. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the person that I know mm -hmm. that is weak, could, that could be manipulated or subjected to obedience, is Satan, not God. Yes, this kind of thing, this kind of stories could be common or uh, uh, prevalent with people who don't know the Lordship of Christ mm -hmm. or the sacrifice of Christ or the redemption power of Christ. Mm. So people who don't know God who are just left on their own. Mm. Yes, maybe anything could happen to them like that. Mm. It might be a possibility. But for some, for, for you to be telling me that in churches people know these things, I even repeat it, or even believe, or even pray about it, it's an insult. It's an insult to God and to Calvary. It's, in fact, any Christian should never waste his time on such a privy or such a uh, frivolous or you know, thing like that. We should, even if they tell you that Satan, just to, to every Christian should be tell, telling Satan, get out of my prayer, I don't even want to hear it. Rubbish. Mm. It is rubbish talk. And if you want us, if you want me to uh, expatiate on that, I'm going to expatiate mm -hmm. on it. And I'm going to, you know, but I want to hear the argument. Maybe, maybe, what, what are they basing that on? What is it? Why that? Why, why, why should they even contemplate? Why is it that people who are Christians, who have common sense, who read the Bible, could not stop that kind of belief system? And I think uh, many times, uh, because we are all subject to who we follow and yes. what we listen to, mm -hmm. we are molded by what we are exposed to. So if uh, the pastor comes up every time and say, Ubundi, that means uh, familiar uh, spiritual attachment, and say there's somebody in your there's somebody in your father's, father's house. house, in your mother's house, who did so 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 some fifteen years ago. So because of that, there's a spiritual arrest on your glory. So uh, we need you to pray now that God should release it. So they pray that prayer first night with you. Next month, they have a night of glory. So the prayer point is still there. Yeah, so as a matter of fact, at any small disappointment, people tend to believe. People, as a matter of fact, people tie disappointment, which could be just a natural phenomenon in life. Uh, sometimes doors are locked so you can open the right one. But they begin to attach such to spiritual battle, to somebody uh, undoing them from their... Father, son, but, or so son. if you say that people talk about it, even pastors talk about it, mm -hmm. then it means they are creating the atmosphere of vulnerability for the people. Yes. By talking about it that there is a possibility like that, 
You are making people vulnerable. That's number one. Number two, you are putting fear in them. You are making them to be anxious that something like that will happen. And that means they are expecting it. And whatever you expect is what you get. Mm -hmm. And whatever you believe in is what comes to pass in you, you, you know I mean, in your life. So because there's the law of attraction, number one. And number two, you know, uh, fear opens the door for Satan to attack. So what I, I think while we were talking, I'm thinking people will probably come up now with an argument to say, but pastor, but it happens. Yeah. It happens now. I, I know somebody like that, that you know, they did deliverance from you. This thing, they didn't get set free. Mm -hmm. I know someone, another person who was doing well, and this thing happened. And look, if they, you say it happens, then I know why it happens. It's because of this thing we are talking about right now. Mm -hmm. When fear mongering mm -hmm. will open the door for those things to happen. If you believe that it's a possibility in the first place, then of course it will happen. If you, you know, are praying about it, it means you believe it. Mm -hmm. So it is what you believe that happens. Uh, you know, what the faith coming by hearing. And it's not just the word of God. It could be if you are hearing the opposite, the word of the enemy or the word of unbelief, that's what will come to you. You begin to believe in it. And when you believe in it, it begins to happen. But it's not supposed to happen because you are not believing. It's not because Satan is powerful that it's not it's happening. It's because you believe in it. That's why it's happening. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it will not happen is not because it is not possible or these things don't happen. They should be happening, but not with us, with anybody else out there, but not with Christians. Mm -hmm. But if they are happening, it means we, like unbelievers, are certainly believing. But the, the thing that you are supposed to be believing is to be believing in your God. What you are supposed to be believing is to be believing in the power of your God. So if you are believing more in the power of Satan or the enemies to be mm -hmm. able to uh, truncate your destiny, like that, we yeah, are hearing. Yeah. So if you are believing that power, there is a possibility that your destiny could be truncated. Then welcome to it. Because, but I am believing in the God that gave you that destiny that is powerful enough that no God, no force will ever be able to truncate or divert, I mean, divert my destiny or destiny. So that's what I am believing and that's what I have. But with the teaching that you are saying the people practice in the church, it means that people are making of believers, or pastors are making believers to believe more in what Satan can do in the power and possibility of the enemy rather than in the power and the potency of God Almighty himself. Yeah. Okay. So you can, I believe you, you heard that and you now can see that you need to focus on the power and potency of God who has given you purpose, who has given you a dream and who has given you destiny or whatever you may call it to be able to protect sin and that the devil or no man has any uh, ability whatsoever to truncate such. If God has given you a dream, he that is able to give you a dream is also able to protect such. Why is it that those kind of destiny, stealing destiny, or truncating your future, or that, why is it that it's only happening to African people? Why is it that it's only happening in Nigeria? Nobody even talks about it. Even, they don't even need to be Christian in the West. <laughs> <laughs> and we will think that we Christians, it will happen to unbelievers. But in the West, it doesn't happen to unbelievers. Even unbelievers, it doesn't happen to them because they don't believe in Satan, they don't believe in God. They don't even believe in your Satan. Do and don't get anything you want to don't get. They don't even believe. They just walk through it. See. And that's why, you know, you know what happens in the, you know, these are all rubbish. I don't believe in African witchcraft. I don't believe in any wizard. I don't believe in any witchcraft. I don't believe in any, I believe they exist. Mm -hmm. I believe that they are powerful, but not to me. I don't even want to use the word powerful. They are deceptive. They are evil. And they do, you know, I don't even believe in any riches and wizards that can do anything, even though I know they exist. For example, let me show you, let me give proof to you. When white men came to Africa, this is not to Nigeria alone, no. They came to all of Africa, from South Africa to West to East. And, you know, they don't even believe in you know, all the witchcraft or juju or something. So when they will come, they were coming to take our land. <laughs> okay, for example, when they went to Benin, Benin you know, Benin used to be yeah. the center of so witchcraft and yeah. everything. The white men just entered to their king, they took him back, like they don't throw him out of the place. And they say, ah, they don't enter, nobody will enter, ah, he will die, ah. They just, they, 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 they entered to the shrine, they have a whole shrine, the palace was full of shrines. They were just taking it, they were pouring oil. So they took the guys that were pouring oil and shot them, I just shot them anyway, they were there, and took the gods. If up to now the antifacts of Benin, they are still in London. All those were the gods, so the god of this, the god of this, the Orisha, this, the Orisha, this. All those Orisha, they were just took them as souvenir and asked. <laughs> 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 they just all the oil they were pouring. 
money. All the oil they are pouring on the head, they just put the oil the thing to wipe the thing off. They the all the all the all the juju and all the witchcraft and all the they thought it was just ashes. Wow. <laughs> They just clean it, you know. Like, they all did that food. Nobody became paralyzed. Nobody fell down. Nobody died. If the king became one, like, they deported. They thrown him. They thrown him and deported him out of the place, out of his own palace. Self. You, you know, the same thing in Oyo. The same thing in Ife. The same. The worst witchcraft. But if it's a black man that goes there from that same culture, they die. They die. They die for real. They, they become paralyzed. Real. Because they believe in those rubbish. It. So it's it's what you believe that follows you. It's what you believe. Uh, but the white man, for example, another situation. Mm -hmm. White men, you know, I'm an Ijebu man. Ijebu too, they are known as powerful juju people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when Nigeria, that Ijebu was the Ijebu land was the last one to be taken in Nigeria. Wow. So they had fortified their own place. So then the British government, the colonial government, gave the Ijebu, I would I would think, mm -hmm. gave him and the Ujabu land, Ujabu people condition that he, they have to give up because they need the territory to do their trade and all that. Yes, so they have to give up the, 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 the their resistance. Yeah. Then we said, we said, we, they gave, we said no, they gave them 40 days. So we had 40 days to fortify them. So we went and collided with the uh, Belkuta people. Mm. So Ujabu and the Belkuta people collided. They got all the witchcraft, all the juju men the, from Benin, from Jebu, from and from all the from Togo, from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> from the Republic. Did you have oh, yeah, they, they fortified the place. They, they buried 40 virgins, as I heard. 40 virgins and 40 you know, virgin girls and the boy. So they did sacrifice, human sacrifice, you know. That any white man that you cross that line of the we die. Ah, you cross 40 virgins and seven of your young men strong, every all the kind of and then do what you can go to go to go to all the incantation you are calling when the white man just came with the job all the Nigerian people are saying, I will not go. We can see which crap there, which crap. You go say, Jawusa people, just come and cross the place. And then the 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 Scandinavian you know, the people from Caribbean, Caribbean. the Caribbean black people also. But and the I will stop by because the Yoruba people said they will not go because they are afraid of it mm. because they fear because they were dying. Yoruba people we always fear <laughs> <laughs> because they were afraid the witchcraft of the because they knew they were sensing it. Mm. But when the white man just crossed it and said, so "You people just come," the Caribbeans and the people who know you all they find any mm -hmm. they just came and just you know when they fire then the our people just came up from the bush and they said, "In the name of you know whatever, I, I, you shall go." In the name of saying, we call him. In the, the fire should not. They said, "We are for fire." Mm -hmm. The guy they just brought machine gun. He scattered everything. And they had two hundred thousand army. Ooh. The Jebus had two hundred thousand army. Ooh. By the time all the babalawos and everything was scattered in one shot, not with the two, 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 two. No, you won't talk. All of them, everybody just got that two hundred thousand. They were the the Babala and the Abuchala. Everybody was scattered. We are saying the police have been saying, "What can we do? Take the land, everything you want." The white people don't know what they are doing. Bazooka, it was bazooka. They call it wow. bazooka firearm. Wow. They just disappeared. They just dis 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 dismantled. It has witchcraft and they are rubbish. Mm. If African witchcraft has been so powerful, why were they all born yeah, sure. That people don't believe in them. Because they don't believe in them. True. And now church. Has helped, has helped church. Mm. He's believing them. You won't believe I don't believe in them with Europeans. Mm. They just scattered them and conquered your own land. Took your wives, your children, you cannot do anything. Mm. Sold them, Papa. Mm. Took went to your shrine, the biggest shrines in all of Africa, Kanabao, Enugu, everywhere they went to all the shrines and took all of them as souvenirs. As artifacts. <laughs> <laughs> no, so now churches. Uh, yeah. Now churches are now enthroning those same which can have been defeated a long time. Mm -hmm. That should have been the proof for us to have thrown all of them away. That's true. I'm not even saying Christians now, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some rubbish like this. Mm. Nobody should be talking about Satan and which God at all. Nobody should be talking about Satan any day in his life. You don't even have any, any need to mention Satan for your whole life. Mm. The only time I remember Satan is when I want to cast out demons. I 
I don't even talk pray about Satan. I don't even talk about Satan. I don't even bind Satan. I don't have any business with him. He's defeated. That's all. That's what I walk in. Mm. He's under my feet. Mm. Well, so uh, Julian Goya, uh, you welcome. No, I'm not talking this small, small, small. Somebody mm. saw, somebody saw. Mm. You, you draw your head, saw your death. That's good. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the father who taught them, who bought them. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> rubbish. Wow. Wow. He was in yeah, so Julie was asking, can anyone please share what the topic is? Uh, there is no particular topic we are asking Pastor. Uh, some tailored questions, yeah. and uh, I think you wanted to know who were. Who were yes, about, yes. So yeah. the question is answered so far is uh, who is in charge of your destiny? Can anyone or anything or any force, be it spiritual or physical, alter with what God has proposed? No, no. We are talking about physical. I mean, spiritual, uh, spiritual right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Spiritual. If you go and jump from physical, <laughs> that's lost. Okay. Okay. Physical. Yeah. 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 So can any spiritual force uh, truncate? Your destiny, mm -hmm. and the answer is uh, we should not focus on all those things, mm -hmm. they, they exist, but not they are not so reality. Not yes, yes, they are not reality to you who does not believe in it. But if you believe, you will be in church, or you'll be sleeping in church, you'll be doing seven days, 14 days. Because the more you are doing 14 days, that's a proof that you believe not in God but in Satan. Mm -hmm. The more 14 days, seven days, that you are even affirming your own belief more. Mm. Unbelief more in God Almighty, and you are affirming more of your belief in the in the forces you are saying you are fighting again. Mm. You, are, you are fighting for ten days, for ten days. Mm. It means you are not you are you are believing in a certain then mm. it will be you will become a victim for the rest of your life. Mm. You'll be going from that one mountain to the other to not end. Mm. Mm. But when you really believe in God, you don't even spend three minutes to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I never spend more than three minutes for, for, for to cast out demons. Mm. They are too weak. It's a waste of time if you do spend more than five minutes mm. to cast out demons. Mm. Mm. So, so what, what has happened is that um, we, we we have we have developed that belief system, and uh, and it has created fear in our in our in our in our system, such a way that um, in such a way that now we are conditioned, we've been conditioned to believe that they exist and they are powerful. And so we are, and one of the scriptures that, that this has been grounded on is um, the, the scripture that says our weapon, uh, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, and uh, we don't, and uh, we don't, we don't fight war against, war against flesh, and flesh and blood, or against principalities and powers in high places, and these scriptures have become, and, and, and scriptures that are like that have become the, the, the pillars. That well, that is the same scripture that makes me to know that I don't need it. Yeah, but those but, same scriptures. Yes, we don't we, we, we don't do we don't, we don't, we don't war against against flesh and, and blood. blood. We don't war against flesh and blood. So it means I don't even have anything to do with them. So no wish can ever stand on my way. That's what it means now. Yeah, that is not flesh and blood. No wizard can ever stand on my way. <laughs> That's what it means. I don't even want to, have to waste my time with them. I have already overcome the one who is their Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. They are Satan, Lucifer, and something overcome. So I don't war against them at all. I'm already enjoying my Lord and Savior has already warred mm -hmm. against Lucifer and against the principalities and power and has over overtaken them. My warning is in faith. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a fight, a good fight of faith. Mm -hmm. Faith in the fact that Jesus has already done it. Yeah. Faith in the fact that Satan has already defeated. Faith in the fact that you know we have put him under my feet. Mm -hmm. Faith. That's why we don't fight against no flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. Our something is in faith. That's right. Faith that principalities and powers have been defeated. It's not that I should now be fighting it, that I will mm -hmm. win. Mm -hmm. As if it's in the future. Faith in what has been done in the past. Mm -hmm. Fight the good fight of faith. Oh, no. <laughs> well, our dear viewers, we are pretty sure that you guys have learned something just with this. You see, Pastor Sunday came alive. And what makes Pastor Sunday comes alive that I've noticed is when something, yeah, um, is when something that we, that we are discussing really is against God's original plan. And most especially when what is against an anti-God's plan is being um, triggered and is being... Um, uh, perpetrated in the church. Why? Because it's okay if um, the world believes that these guys are powerful and they, they truncate people's destinies. But when it is happening in the church and then the church is 
the the chief propagators of this error, then <laughs> can you imagine there are some people who are pastors so, who are coming to speak to me on my program and say, Pastor, don't you be talking about Nigeria uh, transformation project like that? Just keep it quiet, just keep it secret, you know, or maybe God, we God protect us so it's only God that can protect. Yeah, so please, so don't be talking about it. Please, may God look after you. May God protect you. We plead the blood of Jesus for so rubbish. Rubbish. I'm just looking at them. I said, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Rubbish. So, Pastor, I want to give you a follow-up question because we have other questions, but this is this is actually one. I, I don't know because they, there are some viewers right now that are watching that um, they are Christians right now. They are believers and... Um, some of them might have had um, personal experiences, uh, either due to the fact that they were victims of the wrong message or whatever, and, and they can tell you that, sir, I have experienced this witchcraft, um, I've experienced these people really do things to the likes of maybe um, my mem the members of my family. So I want you to address those people right now, and what shift do they need right now? And what can you tell them? What is that thing that okay now now okay now this is the truth, this is what this is what you need. This is what you should think. This is what would help you to actually overcome those experiences. Definitely, definitely, these those kind of things happen, and they will keep on happening. Yeah, as long as you be you keep on believing that it's a possibility, they will keep on happening not just to your children, but to your family member. It will get to you too, sooner or later. Once you keep on believing that it's a possibility. I want to tell you that it's not that I'm not from Nigeria and it's not that I've never experienced the, the powers of evil. I don't think there's any family that has experienced the power of evil like my family has experienced it. So I know firsthand what you're talking about. Three prominent family members of ours in six months of a white down. One of them was a professor. I mean, it was, you know, if, if you've heard of, you know, Adeyemi Akin, one of the uh, foreign ministers of Nigeria, during Baba Nigeria's one, Aki Adeyemi Aki something, Aki Yemi. Yeah, anyway, it's Aki Abola Jaki Yemi. Abola Jaki Yemi was the foreign minister of Nigeria for like 10 years. You know, he was my colleague, he was the colleague, he's still alive right now. He was the colleague of my brother, my senior brother. They were, they were studying together. I mean, in, in that one studied in England with my brother, so, so studied in Sabon. And they married Englishmen. That one, the, both, both of them married English women. That one married an English woman, and my brother married Susan. And so they, they, they were colleagues in the university, and they were in the foreign uh, minister before. Mm -hmm. They were in, uh, in, the, in the foreign ministry before, where I worked as head of uh, department. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, my, my brother was also a lecturer in the University of Ife, was mm -hmm. in, the, I mean, in the 70s. And then he was the, in the first set of the graduates of uh, like the University of Nigeria, of Tuka, mm -hmm. and he finished first class. Got scholarship to you know to do masters and PhD in France and England. Anyway, so he came back to Nigeria, started lecturing. He was always on television. To, no, he was the editor of the Nigerian uh, Today. He said he used to they used to publish that uh, for you know to give to our embassies. Mm -hmm. So he was very prominent and he was a lecturer. Then there was the second one who was a woman and it was even more work to do more work to do than this man mm -hmm. than the man. It was and she was a business lady, a business tycoon. And one of the largest clothing and material, uh, cloth materials in the battle. Mm. So very big. And then there was uh, the third one, uh, who was also working in the Ministry of Economics and Statistics in the same which was also a graduate of the University of the battle. They are the largest. Mm. So these people were all, the three of them were, they were dead in six months. Mm. In exact places. One, in, one, one, one died first. Then the second one on the way back from the burial of the that one died. Then when it's six months after the death of the second one, that one, the third one died. Mm. So those are the life in one family. So I know what witchcraft is. Our family was even haunted mm. because people were thinking that it was my grandmother probably who was responsible for that. So mm. so we know what what, grand, uh, what uh, witchcraft is. But for me to now be talking like this after we have suffered such. From the hand of which I have contacted superior knowledge. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have contacted superior knowledge. I have fortified myself with understanding. So that's why I'm saying that. As long as you believe in the possibility, you make yourself you know, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Secondly, as long as you begin to fear and you continue to fear, 
that this t t t the forces have any power whatsoever, then you are still susceptible to the attack. But when you had the thing I just gave you a practical example now of white men mm. who came to Nigeria and went to the wish crowd, to the shrine and everywhere to, the, to remove the crowns of the head of the king and slap him up and down and nothing happened. <laughs> because they don't, because, because and they are going to the infield where we are the one running to their country to go and eat now. So what I'm saying is that it's because of the belief system. Belief system. The altar your belief system. Begin to believe in God Almighty, mm -hmm. in the supremacy of God, in all the promises of God, rather than in all the stories mm -hmm. of how powerful Satan is. Stop feeding yourself with how powerful Satan is, what he has done, what who experienced, what was done. Why don't you feed yourself with what God has experienced, yeah. with what Jesus Christ has experienced, mm -hmm. with what Christ has done? Why don't you feed yourself with, you know, the promises of Christ? That greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. That this is the victory that has overcome the world. If we our faith, why don't you feed yourself with that? That he has elevated us and sat us at the right hand of God. And we have elevated us above all powers, principalities, and all principalities and powers. And he has made us the head of it all. And he has put everything under our feet. And he has made an open show of Satan. Yes, yes. Why don't you talk about that? Why don't you, you know, deliberate more about that? Yes. Why don't you talk about the victory of yes. God, of Jesus for you? Yes. And you are talking about you know, what Satan is doing. Forget about what Satan is doing. He's not doing anything. Yes, He's not doing anything to people who believe in God. Yes, you are hidden in Christ. Say you are hey. hidden in me. Yes, sir. Then they have to penetrate Satan to get, I mean, Jesus to get to you. But you are not hiding yourself. You are thinking you are thinking you are vulnerable because you are not hiding in Christ because you don't believe what he said. Mm. If he said you are hidden in him, why don't you see yourself in him hidden? Mm. But because you don't see yourself in him, then you are open up. Mm. Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> dear viewers, if you've not shared this video, you guys would bear me witness that the whole world needs to hear this. I'm, I'm talking about the whole world of people who refer to themselves as Christians. Why? Because what we're talking about here, um, I believe very few percentage of Christians have heard this in this manner. So, what are you waiting for? If you've not shared this video, please go ahead right now and share the video. And if you've not invited your friends, what are you waiting for? Go ahead. Invite those friends of yours. Share the video and let the revolution begin. Let the transformation begin. Let the liberation begin. And let God's children begin to walk as giants, walk as kings. And let us really begin to rule as God has mandated us to do here on earth. Alright, so as you've heard, don't waste a minute. Do well to share the video right now. Right now. Do that right now. Uh, so, uh, on the basis of this, the second question is, is alike. Uh, he has said, nobody can destroy your destiny, nobody can alter your destiny, understand who you are in Christ and operate from that superior knowledge. Yeah. Uh, so we want to go into something which is a, it's a topic that is uh, universal. It doesn't speak Yoruba, you know? it speaks English, mm -hmm. it speaks French, uh, it speaks German, German it Japanese. speaks... So before you go into that topic, yes, sir? I want to ask you a question. Dango Tef, who is the richest man in Nigeria? His plans. He doesn't even need to tell anybody his plans. Everybody is angry at him in Nigeria that he's a monopoly, that he has taken everything. People know. So you don't need to hide. Though. You are talking about you hiding your plans. This one that is doing all those things, where did he hide it? You think nobody had what he is planning to do? You think nobody knows that he has monopolized the what they play, you know, the market of cement, mm -hmm. rice, you know, potatoes, every all kind of thing you want. You want oil now. You think no, well, everybody is happy? That nobody is frustrated? No, if you don't go by the theory you are, you are saying that you, are, you don't know you will offend though. No. You think he has not offended, he has over offended you. In fact, he's taking land everywhere and they are saying he's not paying them, he's not employing them. Everybody has complained about it. Mm. So why didn't they change the legislation? <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't work again. He has a reverse alliance. <laughs> so he had Jesus. <laughs> So Baba Saleh is so strong and stronger than Jesus. He can protect better. And then let's go to the Baba Saleh. <laughs> then what are you doing in church? Wow. 
People don't raise it. <laughs> you young men, don't join their club. No, don't join their club. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Don't begin to believe those rubbish because don't even be repeating the rubbish that people of that who are less informed of lower intellectual capacity mm. are talking with their own mouth because they don't use their mind. They don't use their head. They don't use their brain. Just use a little bit of critical thinking. You discover that all those they are rubbish will just scatter. Mm. Don't place up in your church. It's a disgrace. It's an insult. It's an offense against my Lord and against my faith. It's an offense against my faith. I am offended. Silla, we'll give you one minute to ruminate over that. So you can begin to make a decision. You can begin to make a decision now. Mm. To say, no, I'm not going to believe in all these things. I'm going to unlearn the gibberish and the rubbish that I've been taught in time past. And to say, I'm going to believe in God mm. and in myself. Mm. So uh, the next question we we're going to ask, uh, we said this question speaks every language that is possible on earth. As a matter of fact, even those who don't speak, those who cannot speak, they still speak this language. Yes. And people understand them clearly. Yes. This is not the language you need to learn. It's a, uh, like we learn ABC. It has, in fact, no alphabet unless mm -hmm. one has to create that. Mm -hmm. It is a question of money. Uh, okay. mm, money speaks every language. It speaks every language. Now, uh, we have learned from you, sir. That in nine months you became a dollar millionaire. Yes, that's right. In nine months, with the strategy in place, and don't forget we yeah, introduced him as who? As um, several, several natural, the, the one that built the strategy. <laughs> one. Yeah, it's a transform, it's transformation strategy. Good. Yes. So, applying the principle of transformation strategy or transformational strategy, he became a million dollar millionaire in nine months. And uh, another statistic uh, shows that in two years, in less than two years, you produced two hundred dollar millionaires. Yeah. Means you did not just become a millionaire, but you produced exactly uh, after you. Mm. And that's you know what legends do. That's right. And uh, before I used to say only two mothers gave birth to legends, but I think yours is the third one. <laughs> because if I used to say it was just Mary and my mother. <laughs> but when I, when I met you, I now discovered, oh, there's somebody else. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, we have, you have gone far ahead and we, you, are, you are a legend and in that we, are, uh, we want to be like, and we are, we are modeling after. So, the question we'd like to ask is, uh, during this process, because it's a process, what were the limitations you discovered mm -hmm. and that you overcame? So that we can learn from those and apply the same principle. In becoming a millionaire. Yes, in becoming a millionaire. And probably also, you know, if it will, if people now want to say, ah, you it may be different, but you raised 200, so you would have noticed different traits mm -hmm. in those 200 mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. which would still be applicable to everyone. Else. At least you are interested in the limitations. And how you, and how you overcame it. Okay. Okay. The very first limitation in becoming a millionaire. Either ignorance or misinformation. Mm. I was misinformed. I was ignorant of how to become a millionaire. Mm. When you don't know something, you are limited. Mm. So I didn't. That's the first thing. Mm. And the way to overcome that limitation is to get a hold of uh, people who have done it before, people who know how to do it, and learn the principles. Mm. I never knew before. Why I could not become a millionaire was because I was thinking that even though I already believed that God is not standing on the way of anybody, mm. but I was deceived through Christianity. My Christian belief became my hindrance of not becoming a millionaire. Mm. Okay. Because I was a pastor in Christianity, I read the book of a lot of Christian pastors and leaders. And what they would normally tell you is that if you are called, you must face your calling, just for your own calling, 
not one calling, and just face that calling. And what I've been taught is that, in fact, even pastors that I respected, men of God that I respected, they will always say, as soon as you begin to distract, be distracted and go to another topic, apart from your own main calling, that they begin to give you examples of people who are falling, and people are falling that this one fell because it was, it, either they are interested in money and some. So, when, as a Christian, Christianity hindered me from becoming successful by that time. Wow. Not Christianity, I would say, but the doctrines. The doctrines that you taught. And yes, and the doctrines and the way Christians talk about it, leaders talk about it. Secondly, Christianity hindered me in the second way. First of all, I want I thought I was called to be a pastor. So any interest or any attempt to try to make money, I thought I was earning. And that this was going to make me to earn. That's what I was taught. But I was never taught that I could still become a pastor, be successful as a pastor, and be successful as a millionaire, and even become a billionaire, or even become a politician, or even become a media guru, or even become a politician, no, anybody that I want to become. Mm. I was never told that. People limited growth to one dimension. They introduced one dimension of God to me. Mm. Instead of introducing to me a comprehensive God, a total God, mm. a complete God, mm. not an incomplete God, mm. not a limited God, not a God that is in that, or not a God that is not capable to do all, mm. not a God that is not many multifaceted, mm. but God is multifaceted. Mm. I've come to know that. God is comprehensive, mm. God is unlimited, and God is versatile. Mm. But they didn't introduce me. They didn't preach to me the plan of God. They preached to me that only one you can have. And once I'm a, now a pastor, mm. I thought that was the end of my journey. Mm. That's the only thing I could become. That deceived mm. me. And that held me away from becoming a millionaire as well. Mm. The second thing that held me, was why the how Christianity stood on my way to become successful, was that, not Christianity, sorry, but Christian teachings and preachers. Yeah, the doctrine. Yeah, the doctrine is that these people were teaching me that and if you are a pastor and you are a minister you can no anything you, you don't touch money mm. because there are four or three things they said that make people fall pride women mm. sex mm. money and pride and something else there are three things are the three things are the pride are the money, money and pride, sex right, so right. since money is in that list mm. they don't tell you the details of it mm. they only tell you the fair part of it no, fear, 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 fear. How many people are falling because of money? Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you how to navigate that. And how to subdue money itself so that you don't worship it. How to make money your own servant. They don't tell you. They make you to believe that you are the only one who can fall, who can be servant of money. Nobody cannot become your servant. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I was staying away from it. That's another way. Yes, those are the hindrances, the biggest hindrances. Okay. Then the third hindrance was that even though they never said this directly, but the kind of Christianity that I was exposed to that time used to make me to believe that if you are good enough, if you serve God enough, mm -hmm. if you are pure enough, if you are holy enough, mm -hmm. that every, God will just bring those things to you by itself. That was another hindrance. But since I have come to discover that money doesn't come to good people, mm. since I have come to discover that money doesn't come to Christians because they are Christians, since I have come to discover that money doesn't come to educated people just because they are educated people, since I have come to discover that money doesn't come to even business people because they are business people, mm -hmm. I have come to discover that money doesn't come to anybody and people don't become millionaires mm -hmm. and they don't have money just because they are good, they are well behaved, they are Christians, or they are obedient to God, or they are God fearing, or they read the Bible or they pray. Mm -hmm. Not God money doesn't come to people because of those things. Mm -hmm. Money only comes to people for one reason. Mm -hmm. Money only comes to people who know. Those people who know the laws mm -hmm. of money mm -hmm. and who know how to use those principles. 
general ignorance, those are the general ignorances as a Christian. Mm-hmm. Now, after I had now gained the knowledge and I had uh, uh, delivered myself from the Christian you know, limitations, mm-hmm. and I had now even started acquiring the knowledge, mm-hmm. the other, you, the, the other ignorance, major ignorance, after I started the process mm-hmm. that was inhibiting me from becoming a millionaire faster, was the fact that I didn't know where to, what to do, what to invest the money. Mm-hmm. So that is another major thing. But now I have people who are serious and who want to, you know, uh, move ahead. And who want, I have people to talk to, you know, to multiply and talk to them. I make big millionaires now. Uh, but my only condition is that they must first of all have changed their value system, their their mindset. They must have invite themselves to begin my teachings first. Mm-hmm. If they didn't follow my teachings, if they have not changed their value system, their paradigm, if mm-hmm. they have not changed their value system and their inner content, if they are just ordinary Christians, I don't believe them. Mm-hmm. I only believe people who have who have emerged themselves in the truth of this world. Then I could say, yeah, now I can help you. You let me tell you how tell me how much you have. Let's tell this how much you could do with it in a month. And in three years you can make you a millionaire as a result of what you have done. So I think the first thing is uh, today's pastor will not be able to talk so yeah. much about this. Not number one because of time. Number two because he has materials, not one <laughs> materials on this. <laughs> so you can go on uh, uh, Amazon, Amazon and just type Sunday Adelaja. Anything you see that looks like finance, just pick it up. Mm-hmm. How to build a secure financial future? Mm-hmm. Money mm-hmm. won't make you rich. You can get all of those. How to mm-hmm. regain the lost years. lost years. How to regain your lost years. I'm not working for Uncle Sam. There are quite a lot. Stop, <laughs> work, yeah, stop working for Uncle Sam. Become quite wealthy a lot. without tears. Yeah. Yes. How to become wealthy without tears. How to become wealthy without tears. Yeah. So do well to get all of yeah. these materials. And also on YouTube, um, it has financial series that close to maybe 40 hours of teaching. So they had 70, 70 hours of, of financial teaching and you can get it on this YouTube page that's Sunday Adelaja Official. Sunday Adelaja, Sunday Adelaja Official on YouTube. You can go and check those videos. Just check for you can just check money series or financial series and you see it and it's going to help every one of us. You know, there are men who when you just talk the least about them, it will sound as though you are flapping. But <laughs> in the real sense, if not, you must start talking about it. Before. It will sound like nothing. And this is a man who you cannot rightfully want to regain your mind. You decide that I want to regain your mind. mind. And, you, and you go to listen to him. One week. <laughs> not one year. No, one year. One year. Okay. One year. Okay. One week. Okay, one week. okay so what? Any one. message. <laughs> Let's, let's use first day to be losing my religiosity. Yes. Let's second day be yeah. try to understand who this person is. Try to understand. <laughs> let the third one start be starting to fix the foundations. Yeah. You'll find out that in just one week, mm. in just one week, if if you are not changed and you truly went to it, mm. I will pay you for your time. That's right. It's impossible. Sit down, listen. <laughs> yeah. I'll for your time. Now, uh, do you still have one more question? Yeah, I think we should we, we should go in this because we are because of our time frame. Yeah, we are. So we are we have so one. We have about half an hour more. Oh wow, wow. <laughs> guys! Half an hour more. Amazing, amazing. You guys are something that the time is going too far. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's going too far. It's amazing. <laughs> wow, well, thank you. So. Some people want to protest here, but yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we are, we are, okay, we are going to maximize it. Yeah, let's yeah, maximize it. So, sir, um, we want to ask this question about um, uh, because we are students in Ukraine and we've been plagued with, with um, with a mindset also that um, we can't get money here. Um, many I have I've experienced it and I've seen a lot of people drop out of school because of financial constraints. 
and somehow um, somehow we, 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 we've been taught, or somehow, I don't know where we got it from, that in Ukraine there is no work, and you can only rely on your parents to get money across to you. Now, I'm asking this question for, and I wish Ukraine, <laughs> students in Ukraine will watch this video. So, how can, practically, how can students in Ukraine, what can we do to what we do financially? And so right work. now, I am paying people from Ukraine, students from Ukraine, forty thousand dollars as salary every month. Forty thousand dollars every month for people in Ukraine who are students. I alone. Forty thousand dollars every single month is because coming out of my pocket for people in Ukraine. I give them work to do. Some of them I give work to do to help me edit my book. There are some of them, one of them is sitting right here now, who has, he was doing so well that they could even do two or twice a month. But if you do one book a month, you are getting $2,000. If you do twice a month, I want you to have $4,000. So that's one kind of work. But there are many of those kinds of work. There are about 20 of those who are working with. Then there are others who are helping me with uh, translating my Russian, I have Russian mm -hmm. book into, they have understand Russian language a little bit, but they don't understand English too. So they read it and just write it in English. They are also making at least $1,000 per book like that. No, maybe for 500, it depends on the size of the book. Mm -hmm. Five, six hundred, seven hundred. But that's it. So we have a, a group of those. Then we have uh, other people who are designing promotional, they are doing promotions. Facebook, you know, all kind of uh, social networks, mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. working, you know, doing films, video films, mm -hmm. and, you know, documentaries and things like that. That's another group of people. Then there is another group of people who are do, doing with my uh, citations and my uh, aphorisms and mm -hmm. my quotations mm -hmm. and things like that. That's another group of people. But they, those are smaller money. But at least, you know, so in, in, in all, every month I am. Forty thousand US dollars to students, and I'm sure if I am doing that, then there might be all other people, all that opportunities mm -hmm. that I even get to. Mm -hmm. But there are more, there are even other opportunities like I uh, spoke about, even applying to financial law. Mm -hmm. Those also uh, there are other things that could be done about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> so it means opportunities abound. Uh, opportunities abound. You want to know more on how you can make good use of this? Uh, I think you can DM us. <laughs> <laughs> Although we collect agents fees. <laughs> we collect agents fees. Yeah, so I think we should yeah. take one more question. Yeah, the, the, the next question. And the next question is. Uh, I, I, I think I, I could ask it, right? Yeah, you can ask yes, it. Yes, sir. So, Pastor, you are super passionate. And you, we, we had a discussion and you said, that Nigeria would soon become the most treasured and envied nation of the world. And that communicates the kind of, of, um, of passion, and not just passion that is without direction or without purpose, it's what you know. You, so, sometimes you, you, you tell people, because I listen to you, and tell them, just pray that you are alive. For those people that doubt you, you tell them, just pray that you are alive so that you will see the transformation that would that would um, occur and that will happen in Nigeria, and we believe strongly. Um, however, right now um, there are people in Nigeria that I want you to address right now. So the first is that I want you to address the youths. What message would you do you have in your heart right now for the youths in Nigeria in preparation for this transformation? Number one, I want to let them know that by the grace of God, in my first year of coming to Nigeria, I will be employing more people than the federal government of Nigeria is employing. I will be paying salary to more people than the old civil service. You know, everybody is talking about civil service. Governors are not paying salary. Uh, federal government is not paying salary. Government. All those things people are complaining about. They, you know, all of them put together, they are just one million. All civil servants in Nigeria are just one million. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be employing more than that. But I don't believe in employment. 
that's just for the that's just a list. That's just the something. But I, I believe more mm -hmm. in helping people create uh, service goods and services for themselves. And uh, one of the books that I'm going to release on my future for the interim is called uh, <laughs> "Why Losing Your Job Is the Best Thing That Could Happen to You." So I'm going to talk about why people should not look for jobs mm. and why. I have so many uh, comprehensive plans of restoring Nigeria mm -hmm. that uh, to keep on talking about it is like so to you know to just downplay myself. Sure. I've just written another book that is going to be called the Niger that is called Nigerian Economy: The Way Forward. Yes, How to take Nigeria from economic recession, recession mm -hmm. to global. So, you know, I, that book is my plan for economic prosperity for Nigeria in the next 50 to 100 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what should I tell the youth? Number one, I don't believe in looking for jobs. And I pray that all Nigerian youth will never have to look for jobs anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody should look for jobs. All graduates, nobody should look for job. There will be some that will still need to be employed, but what I mean is that even the thing is not there now, but I'm going to pray it when I come, by the grace of God. I'm going to pray uh, avenues, and I'm going to make the knowledge so available and prevalent that nobody will be looking for jobs. Everybody will be creating jobs for themselves. That's the kind of thing, the situation I want to pray. I want to pray so that you don't need to look. In fact, the ones who will be looking for jobs, I will just be the ones that just need experience, or the ones that just need to, yeah, to start. Only those ones who, are, who will need to get employment. Others will not need to, because they will they themselves can make employment and money come to them without God losing their plan. Mm -hmm. So that's my wish. That's what I want to tell them. But I don't, I don't have the wish that God should do it himself. No, I'm coming to do it. So God is God is already giving everything. Say she give God the yeah, give leave God. <laughs> give God has already done all the things that He needs to do. Leave him out of it. We are God's supposed to fix it. If the government cannot fix it, if nobody else is fixing it, don't worry. I'm coming. We are going to fix it. And uh, that's for the youth. Any other person you want me to talk to? Any other person you need? For okay, I want you to address also the um the people who I think you, you mentioned it also, the people that are in the in the civil service, those people who, who, um, who are right now working to the government, I think you mentioned it, but also to, um, to the people that have ideas, because there are many people that have ideas in Nigeria, uh, right now, people who wish to do stuff and they are yes. incapacitated. Yes. Yes. For those people who might have an idea or want to do anything, uh, I want to tell you that we are coming on the platform of Nigerian Transformation Project. And that, that uh, thing that we are bringing is a platform that is going to allow us to finance anybody. Anything you want to do, just have, number one, have your idea. Number two, develop that idea. Number three, write your business plan. But the most important thing is number four, you will need to go and renew your mind. And I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not looking down on any man of God. But I don't believe that you are born again or you are going to any church is a reason for me to be able to help you. I only want to help people who have renewed their mind. And for that, you must listen to at least 200 of my messages. If you can prove to me that you have listened to 200 of my messages very well and you can answer all the questions, then you are qualified to be sponsored. Any project you want to, you have, we are having, we are going to be sponsoring it. But you have to prove to us that your project is better than the others and the others then you have to prove to me that you are, you are you don't have to come to my church, you don't have to recognize me, but you must read those materials to renew your mind. When you have done that, then you qualify, you will qualify for it. So I, I don't I also don't start to give anybody help until I leave Ukraine. It's only when I leave this country that that service will begin. But right now you can begin to work on yourself. You can go to my blog as well. Sunday at the Niger blog.com slash Nigeria and see the form 
there are two forms there. If you want to be part of the United Nigeria Financial Reform Project, there is one form. Then the, the other form is if you want financial help, you can also choose that form as well. But if you, if you cannot prove to me that you have listened to the two of them every day, I will not even listen. And that is because pastor does not want you to come and is asking you, how do you know you can do this thing? And you say, I know I can do all things. We want I to just, be sure. <laughs> I just believe. I have faith. <laughs> we, have, we want to be sure of your uh, ability. We want to be sure of your professional yeah. capacity and capability. Mm-hmm. And that's why Pastor is. Your value system. Uh, yeah, your value moral, system. Moral content. Yes. Yeah, content of character, mm-hmm. uh, skills level, and, uh, you know, worldview, and uh, paradigm. And uh, we want you to reason well. Mm-hmm. Yes. And spread. Mm-hmm. So. You can't you get to renew the mind. Yes. You can't get you can never get enough of Pastor Sunday Adelaja. Yeah. Doctor Sunday Adelaja has so many other people know him. Uh, you can't get enough of him. It's like just sitting and let the conversation just continue. Uh, you know, on a note where we don't even get to talk, apart from ask questions, sit down. I thank God this message is recorded because even we are going back to listen to listen him. Back, yeah. uh, so to get in touch with Pastor Sunday. Yeah, fifteen minutes. Seven. 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 Uh, wow. Yeah, we can get seven. I gave you thirty more minutes. Okay. Interesting. So I think we should <laughs> let's 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 let's, 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 let's ask there are some questions. Yeah. So dear viewers, if you have any question that you want Dr. Sunday right now, you know the kind of questions Dr. Sunday answers. Right. So <laughs> ask I wish you know. Okay. So um, your questions must must have um um, a, a solid purpose and it must answer a question. I mean, it must answer something that would... Um, pressing need. Yeah, a pressing need. Like, you ask for some Sunday, how are you feeling? He tells you he, he has chosen not to... Yes. He has chosen not to consult his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, Prince Mwanchuku. Yeah. 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 Prince Mwanchuku is asking, uh, what is the difference between being successful and fulfilling purpose? Big difference. Right, yeah, big difference because being, anybody can be successful. God has already put things in nature mm. so much that anybody can be successful. In fact, it's a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a sad story if anybody is not successful. Mm. Anybody should be successful, anybody can be successful. Mm. Just use the principles, yes, right. just do anything you want, mm. you can be successful. But that doesn't mean you are useful, you are fulfilling purpose. Fulfilling purpose is to be successful in the right place yes, right. where God created you to be or mm. to deal with. Mm. So God has created everybody for a mission. A mission, you know, to carry out a particular purpose on earth. And that purpose is always having to do with bringing down the will of God on earth as it is, it is in heaven. Mm. To fulfill one of, or the other of God's mandate. So mm. it is when you are successful in fulfilling God's mandate, mm. that is when you are fulfilling purpose. Mm. Not when you are just successful in material mm. things. It is the fulfilling of what God has called you to be mm. that is fulfilling purpose, not just when you have. Uh, and that's the real success. You have that's the real success. Real success. Yes. yes. Mm. Uh, I'm of the opinion also that uh, to be diseased uh, doesn't mean to have organic lesion. Uh, ca- is it possible that uh, one is uh, fulfilling a wrong purpose because it discovered the wrong one? Maybe he, 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 he only he believed wrongly and he's fulfilling what he believed in. Is, is there a way God will uh, help him and know that oh, ignorance, so he did not really know, he's, he's only fulfilling what he had understood? Yeah, I think God is going to credit anybody that uh, is successful in anything, in the sense that God is going to acknowledge your efforts. Mm-hmm. You've done something, you've put in effort for you to be successful in anything. But you will not get the credit for because you are not doing what you want mm-hmm. to do. Okay. So you must, it means the most important thing is to realize what it is exactly uh, that you are called to do. And, uh, you know, some of us, we, we are studying medicine and we have a, uh, we have a lot of people in the medical school where I come from. <laughs> we have good conversations with them and uh, sometimes I, I suspect myself too, you know. Uh, we have a good conversation with them, and you find out that what is it that you, what are you doing? What brought you here? 
and we find out that it is the mom who I had, even heard that one of them is a drummer now and he's successful as a drummer. <laughs> well, that, yeah, it, 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 yeah. yeah. So can I be, he has a yes. huge, so huge song, song. someone like that, someone like uh, Minister Nyanya, Nyan, Nyan, Nyan. he's doing so well in music. And he gave over anything. Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's even a soldier. He's a soldier now. Wow. Yeah. So when we find out that uh, when the woman is pregnant and they ask her, what are you having? Mm. Then he says, I'm having a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so they chose the, this thing for him since he was, was in the venue. venue. <laughs> and uh, when he grew up, I want to become a musician. I say, no, you were... You are conceived as a doctor. Music what? No, Dr. Lomaka. Dr. Lomaka. <laughs> Something like that. So, yeah. how can they mm. probably find fulfillment in still getting the certificate? Because now they are already here. Someone any, who destroyed any, in 40 years. Any photo, any source, any, any sort of knowledge is a beneficial knowledge. Mm. Any knowledge, or unless it is evil, mm. is always going to, you know, there is, there is profit in all yeah, any form of labor that you will give you knowledge. For example, I am a minister now, yes, but I didn't study in the theological school or seminary. Mm -hmm. I did journalism and I didn't even practice. I only practiced journalism one or two years, that's all. I didn't even practice it. So it's, you know, but the knowledge you will get in any area mm -hmm. will still benefit you. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to keep on developing, because the problem with people is that they go to school to study let's say medicine. And after they get out of school, that is the end of their education. That is where the problem is. In my own case, when I got out of school, it was the beginning of my education. So if you will not stop learning and stop developing yourself in self-education, mm -hmm. you will discover that no matter what you study, mm -hmm. you know, that will still help you mm -hmm. to build on it as you are going to do self-education in other areas. Mm -hmm. For example, today now, is, I will say, what I study in the university is only 5% of what I'm using now. And that 5% is not the knowledge yet. 5% is the discipline, the skills, the interaction, the experience of being in the university. But not the knowledge is helping me now. Only 5%. Only 5% of what I have now is thanks to the university. Is what I got in the university. All of that are what I got after. So, basically, recap what you said, uh, they should not consider their time in the university as a waste just because they discovered something else. Well, no, university is not for knowledge, basically. Mm -hmm. University is mostly for the discipline and for the stamina. So, a university education, tertiary education, they are supposed to help you build discipline and, in, and while you are independent of your parents, independent when you are out of your house, to still be able to focus on completing a task. So, so that after university, you will have that discipline throughout your life. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, you have to pass in university. Mm -hmm. And that the most important thing that gives you is the discipline to be able to, to be able to control yourself. When you want to go to class, you don't want to go to class, you have to do it. So the ability so that after school, in real life, you will mm -hmm. still be able to put yourself under. You have the discipline to always put yourself and desire under and be able to discipline yourself to attain any goal you want. Mm -hmm. So that particular goal you are attaining by getting your diploma is just like an example, like a model. Mm -hmm. It's just like you know something that you that you are using. It's just like a puzzle. You know you are setting a puzzle, but the purpose of the puzzle is not that you build that out. Mm -hmm. The puzzle you will, you know mm -hmm. it's, some, mm -hmm. it's just for you to be able to learn the skills to be able to think. So so by the time you learn to think. It will now be that what you need for university, mm -hmm. not that particular thing you are doing. Mm -hmm. So university education is not for the particular subject or whatever they are teaching you. That's mm -hmm. the knowledge part. But there are a lot of other aspects of skill that that is university is trying to do. Mm -hmm. So we have con so we have converted what should be a means to an end. Yeah. Itself. <laughs> uh, uh -huh, it's uh -huh. a problem. Wow. Pastor mentioned um, when he was answering the question about um, success, success and um, I'm, I'm sorry. Still, before, yes. before you continue, let me give you an example for example yes, of my sir. university. Yes, sir. I wake up seven o'clock in the and my classes will start normally at seven thirty in the morning. Mm. So we we'll go to classes seven thirty in the morning, and then we we'll end by three two thirty two thirty exactly two thirty in the, in the afternoon. But after two thirty from two thirty to three, I will go and do my lunch and just go to 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, go and eat in the uh, yeah. So after in by but by three o'clock mm -hmm. within that thirty minutes, I will be in the library, and for six years, I will go live in my home in six seven thirty in the morning. But but three from three to to nine, and that's another six hours. Mm -hmm. I will be in the library, and I will vow not. I will not come out. I can only go to the restroom and toilet. Even if I feel like sleep, I will sleep there in the library. But so that discipline to be out on my feet from seven o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night, mm -hmm. from Monday to Friday for six years. Mm -hmm. So how did that now help me as a pastor? How mm -hmm. could I help me as a pastor? Mm -hmm. It is that discipline that when I now started my church, I felt late. I just remember the six hours I was spending in, in mm -hmm. university for six years. I just said, but what was that? If I could do it in the library, why can't I do it before God? Mm -hmm. So I just determined that I would be praying six hours every day. Mm -hmm. And that is why, by the end of one year of praying six hours one day, I will have 1,000 1, people in my church in a year. Mm -hmm. That discipline, or is that the, life, the school years and the library taught me to stand in one place six and be persistent and have the beauty. Those university years built in me the stamina. Mm -hmm. That's another an advantage. Mm -hmm. The ability to build in yourself the stamina. And the ability to be able to maintain focus. Because that's what Isaac Newton said. Mm -hmm. That genius is the ability to maintain your focus on one particular goal, on one particular direction. So that's what university does for you. For six years, you maintain your mm -hmm. focus in one particular direction. Mm -hmm. So that in life, when you can get that skill, mm -hmm. you can be a genius everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Man, this is there's something about Dr. Son that the like that is. You always get more than you expect. <laughs> <laughs> no more than you bargain for. <laughs> you always no. Come on, come on, guys. If if you doubt me, actually, it comes it comes live right now. Every um every 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 evening by six, it comes like every evening by six or by by seven by seven and by nine. Right? Yeah. So it comes out by seven for um, the DSA at fifty marathon, and it also comes out one and a half hours time. Yeah. yeah. One and a half hours time we're coming out, and also by nine for questions. So if you doubt us, why not tune in? You you could get times two today. So today you could get times this three. times three. Yeah, you get this session seven o'clock. You get another session and nine, and then after writing me a message, you lie to me. Yeah, I know I don't believe you. This man is not real because or go to YouTube. Bro. Or go to YouTube. Yeah, you could go to YouTube. His YouTube channel is Sunday Adelaja Official. And you could see a plethora of messages. You see it. If you want to be drunk with wisdom and understanding, <laughs> <laughs> you will get it there. And also, his Facebook page, um, Dr. Sunday Adilaja. You could go there right now, and or maybe after this, after this, um, this live broadcast, and like the page. Because if you like the page, then you you'll be um, opportune to get to see what is when he comes live and many of his articles that he has on SundayAdilajaBlog.com. And also, I want to prescribe a book. You know, I'm a doctor, so we prescribe. <laughs> so I want to prescribe a book to you to help you discover your purpose. And that was why he was explaining success and fulfillment in life. And that book is, Who Am I? Why Am I Here? That is someone's best book. She's seated right here. <laughs> she loves that book. <laughs> someone, someone else who I know has developed the curriculum. From the book. From that book. Yeah. So, who are what, I, would, what would they do with the curriculum? To teach, to, to teach the, the principles. Those, I mean, he's going to talk about those books, but my own opinion is they should be a part of the curriculum in, in, in the it's formative years of every school. child. Yeah. From primary school to secondary, they should be reading first. So, what is going to I, be? I subscribe, mm -hmm. I subscribe to that. We're saying to him that many of his books should be in, the, in, in schools right now, from, starting from primary school, secondary school, even to higher institutions. These are books that would help your mind, that, that will produce, produce genius in you and make you become relevant to the, to the environment and to the society at large. However, guys, we are blown away. And we have to, we have to. <laughs> Just before we go, there's something I, I must tell you so you can leverage on that. That's right. Uh, you see, I've known so many people who at least uh, have this fame, in the mm -hmm. fame, not, not necessarily the intellect. Mm -hmm. And we know how they treat people. I mean, if such people were here, uh, and we wanted to come like this, and we are the way we are talking, one, uh, like would have been five years ago. Five years. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs> you must have discovered yourself five years ago. Five years for and then write them that you want to see them in two years. And maybe somehow mm. they will be able to shift their itinerary for you in five years. That's right. Uh, but we have a man here who is uh, down to earth and uh, he's always open, his doors are open. Mm -hmm. So if maybe you like his page, mm -hmm. trust me, you can message him your direct questions. Yeah. And Pastor Sunday is one person who regards every individual. Mm -hmm. How do you know that? He will reply your message personally. Yeah, most common. <laughs> <laughs> But make sure you are liking the real page is the one that is <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It has more than twenty thousand likes currently, if if I'm not wrong. Oh. No, right now Pastor is close to hundred thousand. So anything that is <laughs> that is, that is so twenty thousand is flicky shaking, that's not Pastor Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like the real page mm -hmm. and make sure you leverage on the opportunity of his openness and uh, you'll see just how much testimony will come out of it and we are very sure that you even call us uh, to tell us about how your life has changed right. in a in very few days. Yeah. So maybe we should just let Pastor Sunday give his last, last word and, and uh, we'll call it a day. Yeah. It's really been a day. <laughs> yeah. My last word is that uh, I'm an old man. Uh, in two weeks time I'll be fifty. In my own language, they say if you see an old man running, you know, along the highway, running, picking race, <laughs> <laughs> it will mean there must be a purpose for him. Yeah. Either he's chasing after something, or something they chase after, <laughs> <laughs> something after him, right? Or something, yeah. After. So he, he must have a purpose. That's right. There must be. A, so if I'm giving one and a half hours of mm. my year. Mm. of my life mm. to you right. personally mm. and to your viewers That's right. uh, it means I probably believe in you right. and believe that you could make this count right. now I've only succeeded in answering a few questions but I don't want to just impress What you all could do for me is to go sit down with those messages, with those answers, and dissect them, and get the spirit of the word I have spoken. As Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. But that spirit and life don't come over to you until you have spent enough time them, digesting them, then they go to your system. If the word about never being afraid of Satan, or never being concerned for anybody in truck, uh, uh, truncating your destiny, if that word will become flesh in you, you have, we have just succeeded in raising up another person Sunday. You will disregard, you will just walk in high places of the Lord to the end of your days. But if you just listen to them, so the eye was a nice word. Ah, praise God, the eye was a nice word. But if that doesn't make the word become flesh, ah, oh yeah, it was a great message. Ah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one time I listen again, one time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't mess it. Ah, but it was good. I got, yeah, yeah. But I got, I got. Understanding alone, the knowledge you get is not what makes the word to become flesh. It's not what makes the spirit and life. takes a kind of diligent study, meditation. Do everything you need to do to make sure that you listen, even if you need to listen for a hundred times. But if those truths we spoke about will become life and the spirit of the world will quicken you, you will never become a victim. That's just a concern that one was. Same thing concerning finances and same thing concerning you will become a prince on the earth. Just by, not just by listening to 100 messages, at least by making one. Because the word of God is said they are full of life and grace. I mean, grace and truth. So if, but until it's digested, just like when you take, you are married to the student, when you take capsule, if that capsule doesn't open and it doesn't digest, it doesn't break down, 
the content of that capsule, the content will not be released to nourish your body and to heal you. You know, just like doing you know, you go, uh, you know, you go, uh, you know, swallowing tablets, and it didn't break down, it didn't like I went to toilet the day by the way you it, it, it went to, you will not be healed. Same with the word of God. The fact that you have interacted with it, you have swallowed it, you have even touched it, you have had it, you have been excited, doesn't benefit you. But because it's full, the word of God is full of grace and truth. That is the content of it. The content of the particular word, the relevance of that word, or the medical use of it, is about what we are talking about. So we talk about the 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 the, the, the fail, you know, the incapability of Satan to harm you. So then, if there is another topic we talk about, it is that it is in that word that grace and truth will be released. Mm -hmm. So once you have digested it enough, grace will be released on that particular subject and truth. And you know what to do? It sets you free. I know what grace does. It gives you the the unqualified power and grace to be able to do whatever it is that you will be talking to God. But the problem is the people that they listen but they don't go to digest. I pray that you will correct that and this will not benefit you. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. It was a very big privilege for us I mean, to have sat here and uh, ask uh, the questions ask and uh, that you were able to listen. Thank you so much uh, for sharing. Thank you so much for inviting your friends. Thank you so much for listening and thank you so much because you will go back and digest it. That's right. That is the split. And you know eschatology is really the uh, most important part of the existence. So for everything you have said, the last part which said go back and digest it. Same and I think is the most important. So I'll leave you to the able answer, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a better and faster on Facebook Live. But today we had our mentor, Dr. Sandy Adelaja. Next week we are going to have another episode and we are continuing in the review of Pastor Sunday's book, Money Won't, Ma Won't Make You Rich. So join us, not the same time right now, but uh, join us 8.30 p.m. next week Thursday for another exciting time with Saveto and Pastor Anu. Till we come your way next time, remember that information that you've received today would lead to no transformation if it is not digested. Conversion. Make sure you convert it. God bless you and see you. Bye.